Chris. You surprised me. What are you doing down here? I see my Jotun have failed at their orders. But did Padaxes send you? Lysander, perhaps? Tell me. Those fools have no idea what I'm capable of. Which is obvious if you're all they sent to stop me. <laughs> Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning is an action RPG whose developing company met with an early and unfortunate demise. Was the game still a success despite the relatively poor sales? Let's find out in this video review of Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. <laughs> The writers for the game include the much lauded R.A. Salvatore, the fantasy genius behind the Forgotten Realms universe and titles such as Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, and Neverwinter Nights. The game's story revolves around a dark crusade by members of the Winter Fae, a race of beings who are almost immortal and bound by nature. The realm has an intended destiny, however your character, whom has risen from the dead, is thus not bound by the same fate. The story holds its own and flows well. There are limited main story quests. However, there is a robust amount of side quests that will occupy the bulk of your time. One of the game's strengths is the rich lore built for the story. The side stories and backgrounds are not mandatory, but if you take the time to read the books or pay attention to the quests or comments, you can see the web that connects the dots. Name's Agar. Maybe you can help an old fate weaver, eh? Did he? Poor old Fomerus Hughes. He respected the way the world works. What a shame. Graphics for the game are very good and feature a rich color palette. You'll find yourself exploring locales such as deserts, cities, villages, underground ruins, caves, but most of the time you'll be navigating some kind of forest with a healthy glow. The character animations are mediocre, with NPCs acting like statues during dialogue, or repeating the same pointed finger or shoulder shrug that every other NPC did before them. Reckoning definitely did not skip on the sound quality. The voice acting is precise, and no phoned-in voice work was detected. Also, the voice cast seems robust, and never at any point was I pointing out that the roadside brigand had the same voice as the sweet bartender two villages back. It's apparent that great emphasis was also placed on the soundtrack. The music was carefully orchestrated and matches the environment and events. The best way to describe the gameplay is well organized. The large open world map is broken up into different lands and each has its own feel, personality, enemies, and quests. Your character has skills for non-combat activities like lockpicking, detect hidden, and blacksmithing. Then you have combat abilities that fall into three trees, might, finesse, and sorcery. These are your standard warrior, thief, mage archetypes that you're familiar with, however they are very well done and you truly get distinct gameplay types with each one. Depending on how many points you put into each tree, destinies, or class types, are unlocked allowing for combining different types into battle mages, spell swords, duelists, or any other combination that you see fit. The game's controls are where it does falter a little. The keyboard mouse controls are very cumbersome, awkward, and have way too many mappings. The Xbox controller, which the PC version supports natively, is much better, but still not great. The camera is also lacking. Frequently, it'll be jammed into a wall hiding what's going on, or doesn't follow your character as it should. There's also too much of a delay between the control stick movement and the camera movement that no amount of sensitivity can correct. And now for the conclusion. For the good, we have great story and lore with a rich background and plenty of details. We have good abilities in combat, with a robust ability tree and engaging combat types. And then we have excellent length, with enough quests and activities for well over 50 hours of gameplay. And now for the bad. We have bad controls, poor PC controls with the option to upgrade to an Xbox controller, and a shoddy camera that constantly needs adjustment. 
Overall, we give Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning a well-deserved 8 out of 10. So this begs the question, what happened to 38 Studios, the developer? In short, the company's founder, Kurt Schilling, an MLB ball player, took a $75 million loan from the state of Rhode Island. Within 90 days of the game's release in February 2012, it sold only 1.2 million copies. The studio was shut down only months later. This is a case of poor management, in which the developing staff and fans suffered alike. Will we see another Kingdoms of Amalur? Not likely, so enjoy this one as much as you can. This is as far as I can take you. Oh, <laughs> 